March the 14th, 1963. Interview number five for the book Mata Hari, Dancer, Courtesan, Spy. Very well, madame. We're ready to begin. Could you start by introducing yourself? Oh, yes. I am Elspeth Schwagmuller. I was a colleague of Margareta Zella MacLeod, known to the world as Marta Hari. That was a long time ago. Here is a picture of her from the summer of 1906. Or oh, was it seven? Oh, I was well aware of her beauty. I envied her. I admired her. She came to Paris in 1905, destitute but determined. When she started dancing, Fame was only a dream. Mesdames et messieurs, attention s'il vous plaît. Ce soir, quelque chose de nouveau. Ce soir, la danseuse divine de l'Est mystique, Mata Hari. Tonight, I danced in public for the first time. I was nervous, but no matter. The audience went wild. Now I've been invited to celebrate with the rich and famous. Not bad for a poor woman who can't pay her bills. If my luck holds, I'll meet someone here who can advance my career. Le Bal des Artistes. Oui, madame. You have an invitation? Of course. The ball is practically in my honor. No, wait. I must have left it somewhere. I'm sorry. You must present an invitation. Can you believe it? I've been turned away. No. Ridiculous. The ball never has enough beautiful women. What's the problem? I'm hoping to meet an important impresario here tonight, and my invitation is back in my dressing room. Well then, allow me to vouch for you. My good man, don't you know who this is? Matahari. Her dancing is a sensation. Soon she'll be the talk of Paris. If anyone deserves to attend the artist's ball, it's her. Uh, it's a regular, but all right, uh, she can be your guest. Thanks for the lifeline. May I ask who threw it? Just an admirer. You'll have many more. Sir? <coughs> yes? Monsieur Astruc, I believe. Sorry, can't talk. Done too much of that already tonight. Yeah. <coughs> Need something to ease the throat. Would you be good enough? Ah, let me see what I can do. Something to drink, madame. Perhaps. Yes, please. Here you are. Enjoy the party. Hmm. Champagne. France's best medicine. Much better. My voice returns. And who is Astruc's savior? No, wait. I've seen your pretty face somewhere. And the rest of you as well, I think. <laughs> I was hoping you might help me with my dance career. Dance? I'm sorry. But I never discuss business, or anything else, without an introduction. But... How do I know you're a dancer? Oh, you could be a woman of the streets. Come back with an introduction, then we'll talk.
Madame. Good evening. You must be Matahari, the dancer. Yes, that's me. You know my work. I was told you'd be here. You look lost and alone. I am. I'm a fish out of water with these fancy folks. I don't know how to talk to them. Oh, my dear. Just chatter on about the city or the latest fashions or the guests or even the weather. People are all the same. You'll break the ice with ease. Hmm. Small talk. If that's all it takes, I've got a chance. Don't give up. Astruk's your man. May I have a word? Why, hello. What a party. Lots of interesting people here, don't you think? I hope so. Ah, make the rounds. Work the room. You'll meet them all. Paris is a big city, a city of strangers. Let's change that. I'm Mata Hari. Mon Dieu, the daring dancer? I've heard rumors. And now we meet. Let's help each other. I'm a journalist. Grant me a brief interview and I'll introduce you to that stuffy old Astruc. What do you say? Why not? Well, first, your name. May I ask, uh, what does it mean? Eye of the Dawn. A name as beautiful as yourself. And you are Dutch, yes? Dutch, that's right. From the East Indies. Married? Once, years ago. No longer. Ah, an independent woman. Perhaps that explains why your art is so, uh, revealing. I celebrate our humanity in all its glory. Patterns of movement to intrigue our minds and our bodies. I must say, people are starting to talk. And not ordinary people who are easily excited. And you're a sensation among the sensational people here tonight. I'm a little embarrassed to think so. Don't be. Astrog hardly deserves such good luck. Tell him the Morning Herald sends regards. Excuse me. I'm waiting for an introduction. I'm Mata Hari. I've done an interview with the journalist over there. Ah, the one from the Morning Herald. So you're the dancer. I'm Gabrielle Astruc. How can I be of service? I'm hoping you'll become my manager. If I'm going to turn a few dance steps into a career, I need professional help. That you do, that you do, and I might be willing. But I don't trust my own judgment. It's blurred by the sight of too much um, flesh. Bring me some compliments from people who saw you perform. I need to know what others think before I decide. Really? And I thought you were a leader of taste in Paris. <laughs> I lead by following, my dear. Two compliments, no fewer. May I speak with you? Well, hello. Rupert Zollinger, at your service. I'm Mata Hari. The dancer, yes? Perhaps you saw my performance this evening. Perhaps, although I'd never admit it. Quite daring. Everyone here is so stylish, so de jour. Aren't you impressed? Oh, very. That's the only reason I'm here. My companion, Mademoiselle Roye, insists on showing off her latest gown. Perhaps you saw my show this evening. Perhaps, although I'd never admit it. Quite daring. Then I can't expect a word of praise. On your dancing? 
I'd blush to say anything. Sir, thanks again for rescuing me tonight. Obviously, you know who I am, but I don't have any idea. Pardon me. I am Oscar Samsony, a businessman. Practical, respectable, hard-headed. And yet, utterly charmed by Paris's latest sensation. You saw my show? Oh, my, yes. I, I don't know much about the Mystic East, but the language you're using to express it is universal. Congratulations. Thank you. All the people here are so a la mode, it makes me feel ordinary. Yet I saw you dance, so I know you're unique. Don't be intimidated by money and position. You're right. I should just follow my instincts and be brazen. That's the spirit. You encouraged me to be forward, so I will. Monsieur Astruc hesitates to become my manager and demands endorsements. Would you be willing? Maybe, once I know who I'm praising. Are you a fragile flower or a thorny rose? A Zollinger over there, he's certainly a cool customer. If you can get a kind word from him, I'll really be impressed. Whatever shall I talk about? How about his mistress? Always a sore subject. Ah, monsieur, you are a rival. I confess nothing. Hello again. The party lives on while you are here. You look lonely standing here all by yourself. Has your partner abandoned you? Or maybe you're looking for someone new? I amuse myself by studying the fashion parade. Yachts are cheaper than some of these dresses. Consider my friend over there. Keeping her up to date costs a fortune. What do you think? Is she worth it? I'm sure I have no idea. She's certainly beautiful. I suppose when she doesn't pout. Certainly, no gown could make her as radiant as you would be in a sack. Heavens, do I hear a compliment? I suppose. Here's a better version. You light up the ball. Why, thank you, sir. Sorry to bother you again. You again? You make moving through the crowd into a dance. Herr Zollinger gave me a compliment. I light up the ball. Hmm. I doubt Hastrick will be impressed. A tribute like that will sound much better coming from me. So, I think your dancing is ingenious. You're acting brave and you light up the ball. How's that? You're very generous. Madame, I'm Mata Hari. The dancer? Daniel Rue, pleased to meet you. Everyone is so chic here. As a woman of fashion, don't you find it unsettling? I don't give it a thought. Herr Zollinger is a generous benefactor. Nice weather for the occasion. Unless it rains, and then my hair will be a mess. Look at these people. All of Paris society seems to be here. I couldn't name one. Except you, maybe, and that's only your stage name. Paris is splendid tonight, don't you think? As a newcomer, I'm enchanted by the glitter. Paris is Paris? Au revoir.
Hello there. Oh, you're that dancer. I want you to know that all of Paris is shocked by your dancing, including my husband. Oh dear. He's a politician. He has to be shocked. I'm a woman, and I think you are very brave. Why, thank you. Paris is bigger than my husband. The city is ready for you, even if he isn't. What office does your husband hold here in Paris? Public safety. He's in love with electricity, installing street lights to make the city safe at night. Everyone here is so well dressed. What do you think of the new gowns? Thank God for that change. I see women taking charge of their appearance, undeterred by frowning men. I don't see very many artists at the artists' ball. <laughs> Good Lord, no. High society, my dear. Not bohemians. Wealth, not workers. Nice evening. Isn't it, though? You look a bit chilled. Are you all right? Hmm, how kind of you to ask. But I'm quite comfortable. And you? Well enough. For a dancer with no prospects and no manager. Oh, my poor dear. You seem kind-hearted, and that is rare. If there's some way I can assist, I certainly will. Thank you. I've nearly persuaded Monsieur Astruc to manage my dance career. He's wavering and wants to hear what others think. Can you help me? Of course, my dear. I find your dancing elegant, completely new, and a perfect ease for the fools we call men, yes? That's just what I need. I'm very grateful. Well, find anyone to sing your praises? I've been chatting with a mysterious gentleman. Does the name Samsonet ring a bell? He praises my boldness as a dancer and actor. Hmm. The Swiss businessman. I know of him, and he seems to know you. Boldness is no substitute for talent, however. I need to hear more. Just now, I was talking with a kindly matron who thinks my dancing is good news for today's women. Really? Almost. She thinks I'm elegant, refined, and a magnet for men. Thank you. It's obvious, my dear. You're bold, beautiful, original. Tonight, you're the talk of the town, but uh, a career. That will be difficult. There are many dancers. Fashions change. It will require management as good as your dancing. But you're the best manager in all of Paris. <laughs> That's true, I am. And you will need all my skill to make something of your talent. Then you agree. My God. Oh, thank you. Call on me at the theater. We'll talk. Tonight was a triumph. I persuaded Gabriel Astruc, the most famous impresario in Paris, to become my manager. Now, together, we must persuade Paris to fall in love with me and pay for the privilege. Matahari, uh, wait a moment. Monsieur Samsonet. You were wonderful tonight. Yes, but it was hard work and I'm very tired. Pardon me, but I have a lot to think about. Yes, you do. More than you imagine. Meaning? A businessman needs to look ahead. Helps with investments, you know. I'm something of a fortune teller. 
Want to hear your fate? You're very peculiar. As of tonight, my fate is in my own hands. Thank you. Is it? Allow me to show you your future. You dance, but not too often. Astrid won't let you wear out your welcome. Money is short, younger dancers imitate you and then surpass you. Your glorious beauty fades. Men no longer compete to support you. You end upon the street destitute. How unkind. Why are you tormenting me tonight of all nights? What does it matter? Your story means nothing. While you dance, the nations of Europe go for war. And they are all as foolish as you. Because, like you, they all think they can win. So, no hope for anyone. Well, sorry to disappoint you, sir, but I'm an optimist. As am I. Here's a different future, filled with hope. You join my little band of traders in state secrets. You also dance. Money flows freely, you get rich. Together, by trading information back and forth, we show Europe that war is impossible. Did I hear that right? You're asking me to become a spy? For the greater good of humanity. Helen of Troy started a war, but I doubt I could stop one. Not by yourself, and not all at once. This is ridiculous. What would I do? Poison the Kaiser? I had something less criminal in mind. Go back inside the party, seduce that fellow Zollinger, and bring me an impression of his cigar. My knowledge of anatomy must be incomplete. I never heard of a man's sigil. <laughs> it's a small metal stamp. Zollinger's corporate seal. It's worth 5,000 francs. Easy money for someone with uh, your unique abilities. 5,000 francs? But Zollinger has a mistress. We'll change that. Here's a love note from Mamsel. See how she reacts to my plea. And what happens when my glorious beauty fades? This career lasts a lifetime. Talk to Frau Schragmuller if you get confused. Schragmuller? She works for you. Who would ever guess? What am I doing? Somehow I must seduce Rupert Zollinger, a man I hardly know, and take an impression of his corporate seal. At least he's good looking. I just had a thought. Well, I see you've joined the team. Oscar had his eye on you from the beginning. What a strange fellow. How well do you know him? He's elusive, but he pays well. Just remember, now you're in, you're in. There's no way out short of death. What a comforting thought. You're a woman. What does he want me for? Isn't it obvious? I have some skills, but sadly, flirtation is not among them. Good luck. In the theatre we say, break a leg. All right. Let me know if you need help with a splint. I just had a thought. What now? Here is a note a gentleman handed me. My heart is yours to take or trample. This is very touching. Who sent it? What's his name? I really don't know. Is he handsome? Why doesn't he introduce himself directly? He's very mysterious, and Herr Zollinger is in the room, watching your every move. Uh, of course, Rupert. <laughs> Let's have some fun. I'll write a reply. But no, wait. I need a pen. Excuse me. Good evening. I need a pen. Can you help me? Anything for you, Mata. Here's what you need to arrange a tryst. 
I count the hours to a rendezvous. Promise not to be dull and responsible. That doesn't sound very loyal. If Rupert paid more attention, I'd be more loyal. Herr Zollinger, I feel honor bound to show you. Isn't this Mademoiselle Royer's handwriting? I count the hours. Oh, does she now? Why do I waste my money on that wicked woman? Without a thought, she flirts with everyone in sight. It's me again. What now? Mademoiselle Royer, a word to the wise, if I may. Be cautious about Herr Zollinger's intentions. About Rupert? His intentions? What do I care? Well, in talking to him just now, he casually mentioned that he thinks you're an expensive, brainless flirt. He does not. Was he making a joke? He wouldn't dare. And if he did, it's in terrible taste. And, and that would be the last straw. That cad. He's belittled me for the last time. Sorry to bring bad news. <sighs> bring him some bad news. Tell that idiot he's an idiot. Pardon me. Ah, it's our dancer. Mademoiselle Royer wishes me to convey her most cordial scorn for your cruel ways. Is that so? Her exact words were, tell that idiot he's an idiot. That brainless little minx. To hell with her. I'm very sorry your romance has turned out so badly. No, no. It's a relief. Many thanks for ridding me of that troublesome creature. I appreciate your gratitude, but I can't help wondering, do your feelings end with gratitude or, well, go further? How strikingly forward of you, Mademoiselle Matahari. Now it's my turn to wonder, could you possibly be attempting to seduce me? You decide. An obvious man of the world like you must know that seduction is an art and has its rules. Rules? I'm intrigued. Would you like to hear more about the rules of seduction? But of course. Unless there aren't 400 of these things, are there? I'm not a patient man. I don't pretend to know all the rules. I only use four to fit the four basic types of men. Only four? Such a small number. Does Herr Dr. Freud know? The simplest technique is to flatter the man, but it only works on men who are gentlemen enough not to take advantage of a lady, and yet who are unsure of themselves. He's not much of a man if he doesn't believe in his own worth. One technique is to play the part of the poor, helpless girl. It can draw a shy man out of his shell, but it can be dangerous if he is a natural brute, particularly if he is insecure and needs to prove himself. Men like that can be dangerous, it's true, but sometimes they're useful. Some women like to feign ennui and dismiss a man, a man who is very confident or arrogant will rise to the challenge. Otherwise, one must entice him a bit first, then back away. So, that's how women think. And I assumed that they were so sincere. A daring approach is to take charge, reverse roles and break the man to your will. Very effective with an insecure man who is also a bit of a brute. 
but a gentleman may be put off. I can see how a headstrong woman like yourself might find that role appealing. But consider my case. What approach would you use with me if I deign to take an interest in you? With such an intelligent man as yourself, only direct honesty will serve. You're too smart to fall for any tricks. How true. Those simple ploys seem like children's toys. Oh yes. For instance, you're far too wise and virile to fall for abject flattery. Quite. You are certainly a fascinating woman. Here, for saving me from romantic disaster, a trinket I had foolishly bought for Danielle. And could I interest you in a late-night drink in my hotel room? Lead on, Rupert. You're dozing, Rupert. Am I boring you, or just too much champagne? Too much exercise, I think. This may be just the tonic I need. Well, look, here's a useful tool. Maybe I can make Rupert more comfortable. Matter, where are you? Come back to bed. How about a little nightcap to celebrate our evening together? Hmm, that's good. Here's to us. Good night. This might be useful. Aha! A source of heat. What's this? A scrap of paper, nothing to do with any sigil, but it looks suspicious. French Navy now fabricating submarine pressure valves from anti-corrosive phosphor bronze. Hmm, this might be valuable information. The flame blew out. There. No more night breezes. Matta, my dear, I miss you already. With two in a bed, sometimes it's hard to sleep. Here, try this. Comfy now? Hmm, how thoughtful. That's better. Hmm. Hmm. This should heat things up. Well now, that did the job. A perfect impression. 
and I will make a perfect impression on Monsieur Samsonet. Tonight, just as I thought my dance career was assured, I met a strange gentleman who made me think hard about the future, and I became a spy instead. God help me. Shall we continue? Three years pass. What about Mata? Her career? And this espionage business? Did that really happen? Oh, yes. She danced. Her daring made her famous. And she spied. No one suspected. You're shocked. But she never cared what other people thought. It's been three years since I met that man, Samsone. Is that his real name? And the world has changed. As he predicted, I dance, but not often. Now and then he gives me some small task, but so far, nothing important. I can't complain. The money is good. Looking back, meeting him almost seems like a dream. Come in. Bonjour, madame. Pardon me, I, I know I'm intruding. Did I get the room right? You are Matahari the dancer, yes? What can I do for you, madame? I'm not sure. I've read about you. You're an independent woman. A woman who succeeds by her wits. I admire that. It's rare in a world made for men. And, well, I need some advice. One independent woman to another? Yes. I too am battling the narrow-minded society narrow-minded men have created for us. Do you hate men? Not at all. My husband, bless his soul, was killed by an automobile. Now, after many months, I... I am no longer in mourning. I see. You met a man and you like him. Good for you. But you don't know how to approach him, how to get him to notice you. You have it. That's exactly my problem. You need to understand seduction, my dear. That's all. Tell me, what sort of man is he? A gentleman or a brute? He's a scientist. Educated, but not refined. He's very patient. Gentleman, then, broadly speaking. Is he confident or insecure? He's brilliant but shy. He avoids looking at me, but sometimes... Insecure, then? Well, there is only one path to success. If you want him, you must flatter him. Everything he does is wonderful. You're fascinated by his charm, his knowledge, his ideas. That's all very well for you, but I'm not pretty. And I'm not young, and... Don't worry. You're a woman. Behave like one. When he offers you a cigarette, take it. Ask for a light. Move around in your chair when you're with him. Signal your intentions, and in his eyes, you will be beautiful. You think so? I'm quite sure. Ah, merci beaucoup. Wait, you still haven't told me your name. Yes, I suppose I should. I'm Madame Curie. Marie Curie, the renowned chemist. Yes, and no one must find out I came to see you. It will be our womanly secret. Your ideas. I will try them. They'll make a fine experiment in human chemistry. Bonjour, Elspeth. Mata, there you are. I've been looking everywhere. Oscar wants to see you. Tell him to meet me at Giroux. I'm off to lunch. Not here. Not in Paris. What's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing. Oscar is uncomfortable in Paris. He feels exposed. He prefers Monte Carlo. It's neutral territory. 
Take the train. Very well. I understand. And Mata, be careful. The journey will be dangerous. Foreign agents will be on the prowl. If they corner you, you'll have to start again. Taxi? Well, to madame. Gare du Nord, please. With pleasure. Hello there. What's up? Take it to... Monaco, please. This is my first train journey since I became a spy. While traveling as a civilian is easy and mostly enjoyable, now being a spy, I have to be much more careful and must select each step with caution. I cannot simply sit in the train until it arrives at my final destination. Instead, I have to travel from station to station and decide which way to go next. An enemy agent is on the hunt for me, and if we end up at the same station, he will arrest me and take me back to my starting point. Bonjour, Monsieur Samsonet. Ah, Mata. Beautiful as always, even in that shapeless dress. Please, sit. Monsieur and Madame are too stiff for conspirators like us. Call me Oscar, s'il vous plaît. Do you prefer Mata or your real name? When I was a child, people called me Greet, short for Gertrude. I don't feel much like that child anymore. Matter it is. Now, to business. I suppose Elspeth explained. She was very mysterious, as you no doubt intended. Good. Good for her. Well, what shall I tell you? Last week, British and French diplomats conducted long talks in Paris. My client wants to know what they have discussed. Can it be so momentous? I have no idea. If one plays cards at the casino, it helps to know what's in the other fellow's hands, yes? I suppose. How am I to help these card sharps? The British ambassador is on vacation at the moment. I know, because he's here in Monaco. Go to the embassy in Paris and photograph his notes. I'm no sneak thief. I'll be caught and spend the rest of my life in jail. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a spy after all. Too late for doubts. You're one of us now. Espionage. Well, you know it's like marriage. Till death do us part. But how on earth? Think. You have a certain strength of character. And of course you also have. Yes, I know. My womanly wiles. All right then. I'll flirt my way in. You'll need a camera. It should look like a tourist's, but it must have the finest lens. And where, pray tell? Find Shragmula. She'll have what you need. The French fear a German invasion and want to make alliance with the British. However, they hesitate. Something, some new weapon possibly, has given them a chip on their shoulder. Let's find out what it is. The British Embassy. Secret papers. Photographs. This is real spying. No mistakes allowed, or my famous name will be in the newspaper and not in the art section.
Taxi? Where to, madam? Train station, please. With me. Hello there. Destination? Take it to... Paris, please. Excuse me, Madame Zelle McLeod? Mata Hare, the exotic dancer? Yes, that's me. What do you want? Please pardon the inconvenience and public place. It's awkward, I know. Do you imagine some business with me? What could that possibly be, I wonder? Allow me to introduce myself. Captain Georges Ladoux, French counterintelligence. Yes. Well, please understand. I'm late for my train. No trains today, madame. As a duly appointed officer of the law, I must ask you to accompany me to police headquarters. You're under arrest. Oh, my God. I'm sure it's all a misunderstanding. No doubt you'll explain. Or maybe not. The charges are serious. This way, please. Maybe I've got some luck left today. Let's see. Nice, a piece of wire. Without a lockpick, forget it. This should work. Uh oh. Matahari, how are you? Settling in comfortably? Most certainly not. Let me out. Naturally, we have tried to contact lawyers on your behalf, but our attempts have failed. It might be some time before we can correct the situation. Hours, days, who knows? Weeks. I've done nothing, and you know it. On the contrary, I am convinced of your gift, but I have no wish to see you suffer. Perhaps with a confession and an offer of restitution, we might strike a bargain. To what imaginary crime would you have me confess? I'm sure you know very well, theft. Theft? You are expecting a different charge? I don't know what to expect. The item in question is a certain bracelet taken from a prominent Swiss industrialist, Herr Zollinger. Really? Rupert gave me that bracelet. Ah, yes, but his wife has filed a complaint. It appears the item was not his to give. Do you have it? You mean this? Take it. Merci. No doubt the rightful owner will drop her complaint. I, on the other hand, am not yet satisfied. What now? You are a famous dancer, yes? Oh, notorious, depending on your point of view. You see, even I, without the slightest interest in the arts, know something about you. I listen, I stay awake. And I hear it said that you know your way around men, that your true occupation is not dancing, but wealthy lovers. And so? There's nothing criminal about my conduct, and that's my own business. I'm not suggesting otherwise. However, I also hear whispers, pure gossip, I'm sure, that you might be a spy. Any truth to that? Not the slightest. Too bad. You seem well equipped for the job. You're attractive, bold, capable, and sensible. 
If you were willing to do some uh, investigating for me, I'd be willing to let you out of this damn cell I trapped you in. I'm cold and miserable. What do you want me to do? The Germans are working on something they call the Jules Verne project. We want to know what it is. And my role? The officer in charge is one Major Arnold von Kaller. He's here in Paris. Better yet, he's a fan of Mata Hare. Stage a dance, get to know him. I leave the rest to you. Now I'm a slave to two masters. First Samsonet, eh? now Ledoux. Somehow I must satisfy them both. One full step and I'm finished. My life is starting to feel like cheap fiction. I need to find out what the Jules Verne project is all about, or I'll spend eternity in jail. Looks like a radio. Elspeth, there you are. Hello, Mata. How can I be of service? I need a camera. It must be a good one with the finest lenses. Touring Paris for snapshots of state secrets, are we? I have just the thing. Oh, Els, you're a treasure. Taxi? Where to, madame? British Embassy, please. Right you are. May I speak with you? Greetings. State your business. May I come in, please? You need a pass. Do you know who I am? No, ma'am. Should I? Do you know the ambassador's wife? You're not... Uh... I'm a friend. Do you understand? The ambassador has a friend? You mean that sort of friend? Really? I'm quite shocked. Don't be. He's an impressive man of cosmopolitan tastes and skills. Well, that's some comfort. Nice to know we've got a real John Bull on the job. And he's out of town. He asked me to retrieve something from his office. You still need a pass. Hello there. Why, hello. I hope I have the right man. Yes? Part of the embassy. Right you are, lady. Keeping a close eye on passports. I've stopped many an immigrant from entering jolly old Albion, I can tell you. All right, then. I need some help. And you look, well, helpful. I don't know. What's the matter, anyway? Let's discuss it somewhere less public, shall we? Love to, ma'am, but I'm out on business. Another time, maybe. So, you're just a clerk. I took you for an attaché, at least. Did you now? Maybe I'll get there yet. Say, you French duties are a pretty down-to-earth lot. Don't I know you? I've seen your face.
Does this ring a bell? Good Lord. You're Mata Harry. The talk of Paris. Come see me in my office. Here, I'll give you a pass. A happy little bush. There we go, and no one the wiser. Here you go. Ah, very well, my dear. Let's see. Everything in order? Please come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Ambassador. Where are you? On holiday, you say. How nice, how convenient. I hope you enjoy the Riviera. I hope you like it so much you'll never want to come back and find me snooping through your desk. I had expected this. A combination lock. Goodness, those naughty Brits. It looks like they've been reading French Navy mail. Here's a communique they intercepted about torpedo launch tube pressurizer valves. I'll take that. A box with blank notes. I think no one will note if one note is missing. Hey, there's an impression on it, but I can't decipher it, it's too faint. They will certainly notice if I take it. On the other hand, I can't stand a messy carpet. I'm not only a fantastic dancer, but also a great detective. There are numbers written on it. I don't know if it's luck or my skills, but that's the right combination for that lock. Aha! Found you! Suddenly I actually feel like a spy. Ugh. There must be a way to make these papers stick. What is it? Scotch whiskey. Hmm. Alcoholic and also wet. This would work, but it would also leave some suspicious traces. Here, you sewer rats, a toast to your good health. Now it's filled with fresh and clear water.
Excellent. Now they should remain glued on the window. Now I should hurry and take a picture of these before they get dry and fall off again. All right, let's put you to work. There. Secrets stolen. But wait. I can't leave confidential documents sticking to the window. Let's try this again. Time to cover my tracks. Welcome home, secret papers. Here's a note. Hmm, it says, Local operative has launch tube info. Use password torpedo. Well, I will, if I get the chance. Here we go again. Hello. Are you the local operative I've heard so much about? I might be. My name is... Madame Torpedo, my game, well, I love the sea. You know, waves, deep water. Then I guess this is meant for you. Aha, a diagram. Pipes and valves, possible leaks. I'll see this gets to the proper fish. Good lord, I'll possess the ambassador to hire a mermaid. You should see my fins. Hello there. Uh, destination? Take it to... Monaco, please. Here's what you're looking for, I think. Splendid. Excellent work, Mother. You'll see a nice increase in your bank account as a result. Thank you. Do you want to know what's holding up the Alliance? You read the secret papers. How could I help myself? As you surmised, the French are working on a weapon they believe will deter any German invasion. Which is? They don't reveal details. All I know is... They think it will terrify their enemies. These photographs of yours must be very interesting. My client will be overjoyed. There's something else. Ever hear of a Capitaine Georges Ladue? Mm, possibly. Some minor intelligence officer, I think. I I'm not sure. Well, I'm working for him now, too. Good God, what does he want? I was arrested and threatened. I'm supposed to uncover some German scheme, the Jules Verne project. Well, I think, go ahead, do it. I was hoping you'd say, I'll get you out of this mess. There's no easy way to do that. Cheer up. This is better than I ever dreamed. We'll have inside connections on both sides. Today I completed a difficult mission, and I am much relieved to live through it. Oscar thinks the world will be a better place now. 
Who knows? I'm certainly richer, but not much wiser. Hello there. Destination? Ticket to... Paris, please. Sir? Why, hello. It's been too long. Yes, a busy season for me, you understand. You mean another lover? <laughs> mata, mata, you can't fool me. I wouldn't even try. I feel like dancing, Gabrielle. What do you say? I don't think it's a good idea, Mata. Remember last time? We did well enough, but I sense audience fatigue. Mm, Le Monde did not even review your show. We should wait a while. Please, Gabriel. I'll be frank. I need the money. Eh bien, I'll be frank as well. Your dances are stale. Audiences are bored. You need something new. You're right. But what, I wonder? I've racked my brain and I'm all out of ideas. My dear, you just need inspiration. Get out into the streets, look around. Birds flying, fountains bubbling. Uh, to an artist like you, almost anything might suggest new dance moves. Ah, what a good idea. Look to the streets. I'll do it. When I see things like that, my toes start to tap. Hello there. Hello. I see you're traveling. Here's a tip. If you want to avoid hostile agents, ask for a ticket on the Paris Express. Why, thank you. Of course, there won't be much excitement. No way to improve your tradecraft skills. So if you prefer adventure, just ignore my advice. I see. Less skill, more security. Ask around. Some of my fellow operatives may know of other safe routes to use. I'll remember that. Enchanté. Marta, you look happy. That's not like you. What's wrong? How droll. Nothing is wrong. You won't believe it, but I've found an inspiration. Hmm. Show me. What do you think? Matahari remains the queen of dance. Then I can stage a performance? Absolutely. The theatre is yours. Wait, wait. I have a letter for you. It arrived this morning. Dear Mata, I took your advice and the most wonderful man has fallen in love with me. Call it chemistry if you wish, but I am in your debt. If ever I can be of service, please call on me in my laboratory. A fan? Can you believe it's signed Marie Curie? Goodness! <laughs> you know everyone, Marta. Not quite everyone. Perhaps after tonight's performance... Oh, how wonderful. A new performance. I love the tension right before I get started. Now I must concentrate. I have to feel the rhythm. Every move exactly at the right time. 
The choreography is precisely concerted to every single tone. Okay, let's go. Mata, tonight you had them in the aisles. Money is pouring in. Glad it went well. I'm exhausted. Fraulein Matahari, can it be? Yes. Ah. I am so lucky tonight. I was hoping, waiting, and here you are. And to whom do I have the honor? Sorry, no flowers. Rude, I know. But, oh, yes, of course. I am Major Arnold von Kalla. Really? A German officer? I enjoyed your dance. Um, I've seen many. This was Oscar Zeichnet. The best yet. You are a... a goddess. Please, you make me blush. No, no, you are an entertainer beyond all others. Perhaps, if you're in Berlin someday, I'll be permitted to entertain you. How gracious. Come to the Grenadiers Club on Unter den Linden. I'm often there, just to present this card. See you there, maybe, I hope. Why wait for Berlin? <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I didn't plan, and I have duties. I can't avoid them. Till Berlin. Hello there. Uh, destination? Ticket to... Berlin, please. Oh no. One of the stations seems to be out of service. Maybe it was an accident or even sabotage. But regardless of the cause, I will have to find my way without this station. Bonjour. Greetings. I am worried about travel arrangements. Hostile agents are everywhere, it seems. I was told you might have a better idea. Well, if you want a quick, safe but boring trip to Berlin, try the rocket. Many thanks. Guten Abend. Guten Abend, Fräulein. Is this the Grenadiers Club? It is. You have an invitation?
All in order. You may go in. Well, hello, young lady. How nice to find you here in our midst tonight. Yes, it's quite an honor. Don't often get girls here. Military minds, mostly. Talk of cavalry, swords, breech-firing rifles, reload times, casualties, and so forth. But how fascinating. Of course, we're all doing our duty to save women like yourselves from wartime depredations. The raping and pillaging, as it were, as I'm sure you understand. Yes, and I'm most grateful. Will you excuse me, please? Oh, why, of course. Here I am prattling on, and you're looking for a snack. Over there. What a talker. I'll never hear anything interesting while he's around. Had enough of our talkative friend, huh? Oh dear, was I rude? Well, it's a lot quieter when he's not around, and maybe we'll get lucky. Sometimes his wife will call him home like a good little puppy. How humiliating. She telephones our butler and he delivers the message. You should see him scoot home to Mama like a good little boy without another word. Goodness, what's the poor man's name? Graf Baumann. Hello? Grenadier's Club? Is Graf Baumann there? You call him Freddy? Really? How familiar. Yes, well, send him home immediately. Tell him his wife has supper ready, and if it gets cold, she'll be cold too. What I hear is vague talk of non-ballistic ordnance, whatever that means. Those French. We can't entirely discount the rumors. We've got our secrets. No doubt they do too. Speaking of the French, how is your friend Vern these days? Not well. Broke his neck last week. Mein Gott. How serious? Structural failure. Metal fatigue, steel cracking. It's terrible. The alloys, the alloys. Well, that's an interesting piece of news. I must find a way to use it. You there, just a minute. Why, Mata, it's you. At your invitation, Major. I hope you're well. Now, seeing you, I am. Um, this is my friend, Colonel Holtz. Freddy, meet Mata Hari. Enchanté. And I as well. Arnie, what a radiant ornament you've added to our grim little club. Mata, I'm... I'm speechless. Your visit so unexpected. What brings you to Berlin? Business. And you. Hmm, really? Apologies, I don't mean to be rude. Freddy and I are talking shop. It's terribly boring. Please, make yourself at home. Enjoy the food, the wine. Thank you. I've already sampled your splendid buffet. Let me recommend a tender morsel. Rumor that your Jules Verne project is in serious trouble. What? Structural failure. How do you say? Metal fatigue? Cracks in the steel? Good God, woman. What are you talking about? 
I might be able to help you. You're a woman. What on earth do you know about metallurgy? Not much, but I am a well-known dancer. I meet important people. I have interesting friends. Some of them talk too much. Some of them, like Marie Curie, know a little chemistry. Ah, you do have interesting friends. And you yourself are more interesting than I ever imagined. Tell me, are you a spy? You seem to think so. All right, all right. Let's talk business. The Jules Verne project is floundering. We need better steel. I'd like to know more about a new French method of producing alloys. It's called the Dumollier process. The Dumollier process? I assume you're already uh, employed, but I don't care. Bring me the details and I'll pay good money. Let me see what I can do. Taxi? Where to, Fraulein? Spandau Station, bitte. Here we go. Ticket to... Paris, please. Taxi? Where to, madame? Marie Curie's lab, please. Here we go. Hello, Madame Curie. Matahari, how wonderful to see you. You got my note. My advice worked. Sorry. I'm cooking an experiment. Must concentrate until it's done. If I'm intruding... No, no, you can help. Find some magnesia, quick. Little crystals, like table salt. Here, I think. Très bien. Now, get me some vitriol. It's a clear liquid with a poison sign. Could this be vitriol? Yes, sulfuric acid, vitriol, it's the same. And just what I need. Oh, good. Now you have time for a little chat. Oui, I mean, no. I still need reagents. Hand me the saltpeter. Saint Peter? Saltpeter, too, too sweet. Funny, powdery stuff. Who knows what it really is. Somewhere I read about this one. Are you making gunpowder? <laughs> Goodness, no. There, we are done. Now I can relax. I'm investigating the properties of radium today. Do you know? It casts rays that penetrate through solid objects, just like Röntgen's X-rays. That sounds very mysterious. It is. Nature is strange. What can I do for you? Tell me, how may I repay my debt? Perhaps there is something. I have a friend who is curious about the Dumollier process, whatever that is. Any idea? No, I don't know much about such things, but uh, Jacques, he's my new lover, might. He's the most adorable man. Come and meet him.
Matahari, Jacques Brunel. Enchanté, mademoiselle. Mary has been singing your praises, and now I see why. Thank you. I'm wondering, do you know anything about the Dumolier process? Well, yes, as it happens. My speciality is organic chemistry. But the government has asked me to study how to introduce organic methods into industrial processes. What about Dumolier? I need details. Well, I am sworn not to tell anyone. Not even for a friend of Mary. I have the notes, of course, right here in this book, all bound and locked up proper, and written permanently in iron oxide ink. I see. Sorry, state secret. Squashy thing. Shreds of vegetable matter inside. Tobacco? That didn't really do anything. It's bubbling. Uh oh. Mata, what have you done? An experiment. I guess it failed. Jacques! Jacques! Help! Help me clean this up. It's awful. That was my tea. What a mess. And now I'm thirsty. Where are you going? To buy tea! The essential chemical! I can't work without it! Maybe I can photograph the notes, locked or not. This stuff sort of glows. Madame Curie's famous radium. Hydrobenzene. What on earth? familiar. Aha! Radium casts rays that penetrate right through solid book covers. Well now, I hope there are some notes on this plate. I have to make them visible. There, the plate cover is soaked. Now to open it up and see what we've got. Uh oh, it's still developing. Pretty soon the whole thing will be black. I need another chemical to stop this. There, that stopped the process. And look, the Dumolier details can just be seen. Iron, of course. And carbon, 0.5%. Nickel, 3.5. Chrome, 1.5. My ingenuity knows no bounds. Mm. 
Gare du Nord, please. Let's go. Berlin, please. And that man Marconi has spawned a radio devil. The French find him useful, but he works for no master. We hear everything. Would you please stop disturbing our conversation? <laughs> yes? Marconi, Marconi. I hear his name, but why is radio so radical? Ships depend on radio now, to find their positions, to call for help. Marconi has a new idea we're improving, a receiver that points at the sender. It's called a radio direction finder, and soon, every time a French ship sends a signal, our submarines will know where to attack. How very clever. And the French? They suspect nothing. <laughs> A moment, please. Mata, welcome back. How's your chemical friend? Very well. Good, good. Does she have a recipe for me? Perhaps. Where is my money? First, the recipe. Oh well, here. Let me see. Chrome at 1.5. Good God, that's double our value. This is important news, Marta. Well done. Danke schön. It's crowded here. Why don't we discuss your fee in the comfort of my home. Major von Kaller, are you suggesting a rendezvous? May I call you Arnie? I... Uh, um... Don't be shy. I'm not. Comfortable, Arnie? Hmm... What a delightful, informative evening. I'm very pleased and very sleepy. Mm -hmm. A pencil. A sheet of paper. Well now, here's a thought. Submarines. They're not going to the moon, are they? That's impossible. What's this map? The Germans have carefully marked out all the French shipping routes with notes on radio signals. Is this the Jules Verne project? Probably not, but they're up to something. There is a strong box behind it. I can't open it. Don't tell me you're planning a trip to the moon. Uh, not quite. Although, <laughs> wait till they see the big gun. That will shock them. How big is this gun? Can you really shoot the moon? Secret can't tell. No one knows about page 
one hundred and two. What? Arnie, you're asleep. It's all on page one hundred and two, my dear. What's this? Numbers penciled into the margin. Twenty-one, seven, fourteen. That looks like the combination to a lock, but where? Aha! There's a drawing in here. Some sort of plan. A giant cannon. Just what Ladue wants. But I can't take it. A spy leaves no traces. I know. I'll make a tracing. I'm not much of a draftsman, but this should be good enough for Ladue. On the other hand, there are too many men in my life telling me what to do. It's time to make some money on my own. Arnie, look what I drew. Beautiful, my darling. If I don't get my money, I'll have to show this to my friends. Oh, Marta, don't be such a vengeful woman. Our plan was a dream, but the reality is a nightmare. The big gun is a twisted wreck. I need more information to perfect it. What about Boron? We know that's important. Bring me the numbers, and you'll have your money. Taxi? Where to, Fräulein? Spandau Station, bitte. Let's go. Paris, please. Marie Curie's lab, please. Please, get in. Rupert! Matter, how nice. It's been... Yes. What are you up to these days? Not much. The usual. Buying, selling, running my little company into the ground. <laughs> that I doubt. You're right. I was hoping Madame Curie might join me in a new enterprise, but her head's in the clouds. Otherwise, as of today, things are looking up. Still dancing, I hope. Sorry, uh, I'd love to chat, but I must be off. Was it Zollinger? Was Rupert in here? I don't know. I, I don't know. Jacques, he's dead. Von Kalla wants information, and I'd better find it fast. The police will be here soon. Here's something odd. A note describing how tiny crystals can control the frequency of radio waves. Maybe I can interest one of Samsonet's clients in this tidbit. Probably Brunel's.
Well, well, a notebook. But wait, it's empty. I'll take that. Hmm. I see pages marked phosphates and steel, but no notes. The book is empty. I already looked. What a pity. As for you, what news from your friend Von Kaller? The Jules Verne project is a giant cannon. Like the one in From the Earth to the Moon. Exactly. But they're having trouble casting the barrel. It's a nice drawing matter, but I see no dimensions. How big is it? I have no idea. We need to know. Look around. Let's find something we can use as a bargaining chip with Von Kaller. Whoa! The pen is full of ink, but it flows clear as water. Mata, you're a genius. The man kept his notes in invisible ink. But how can we make these notes visible? Maybe Mari knows something. Mari, do you know something about the invisible ink Brunel was writing with? I invented it for him. Then you know how to make it visible? Yes. Try iodine. Thank you. Iodine. First aid for cuts and scrapes, I suppose. Look! Brunel's notes. Pages on organophosphate compounds and, aha, steel formulas. The key seems to be boron for heat treatment and hardening. This is what Von Kala is after. But let's improve the numbers a little bit. That gun of his should be perfect if he's going to hit the moon with it. Instead of 0.05% boron, let's make it... 0.07. Here, deliver this and bring me the cannon dimensions. Brunel is dead. It could have been an accident, but I suspect Zollinger. He's after something Brunel knew, but what? Steel making? That seems much too ordinary. The boron formula cost a life, a very high price. Let's hope it buys me the size of that cannon. Ladu won't rest until he has the final details. Berlin, the rocket, please. Well? All right, here you are. Imagine. The notes were written in invisible ink. Quaint, but fascinating. Boron, 0 0.07. Himmel, I had no idea it could be so high. Excuse me, Mata, I must run. Wait. May I have a word? Meta, my dear. How are you? You seem to have startled my friend. I am surprised. He says such nice things about you, too. He's impossible. How can I help? Colonel, the Jules Verne gun won't actually shoot the moon, will it? Goodness, no. But Paris... Paris will be in range. Then it must be a very big gun. Oh, yes. Bigger than yours, then. What do you mean? Well, aren't you an artillery officer? Madame, I am not a 29-meter cannon. 
but I've got what it takes for the targets I aim at. Now so do I. Paris, the express, please. Police station, please. Let's go! Hello, Captain. Hello, Mata. Bearing gifts this afternoon, I hope. Just one. 29 meters. I beg your pardon? 29 meters is the size of the Jules Verne gun. They'll be able to shell Paris from the Rhine. Those Germans, what a fantasy. Jules Verne, the moon, 29 meters, they're lunatics. What about me? Do I hear a thank you, job well done in there somewhere? Of course, you are formidable. We'll work together again, of that I have no doubt. I hope not. Don't sulk. We both know you're a spy, Mata, and the only way out is death. The Jules Verne project has hit a snag, it seems. Yet I doubt Arnie and his team will give up. If not cannons, they'll create something else new and horrible. And the French are just as bad. Ladoux is much too cheerful. Let's go on, Frau Schragmuller. By now, Mata was rarely dancing. Do I have that right? Yes. Just special performances. She had made some money and she had other interests. The world was changing, speeding up. Mata got caught up in the whirl. Time passes. I only dance now and then. I was warned. Fashions change. Money is no longer an issue of survival, thank God. Every so often I do some small job for Oscar, and like everyone else in this modern age, hope my work will bring good times. Yet war clouds gather, in spite of everything. Bonjour, Oscar. Mata, how nice to see you. Looking well, looking sleek, looking beautiful. My heart skips a beat. I'll bet. At least you claim to have a heart. That's encouraging. Sit down. We must talk. It's been more than a year, and even then that mission to Prague wasn't much. I dared to hope you had forgotten all about me. Forget about you? Never. I have a task that only you can accomplish. Work your way into the Daimler factory outside Berlin and find out the details of a radical new airfoil your fellow countryman Anthony Fokker is working on. Memorize the information and report back to Stragmuller. Me? In a factory? Have you lost your mind? Not yet. Don't worry about the factory. The trick is to befriend a certain young woman. Lucky us. A fan of yours, as it happens. Her name? Mercedes Jelinek. She's the daughter of Emil Jelinek, a prominent diplomat and Daimler's foremost investor. He is here in Monte Carlo. Start by introducing yourself. Tell him Louis Renault is recommending you. The French automaker? I don't know him. Does it matter? Now's your chance. Jelinek is over there. I must make friends with Mercedes and win myself a tour of the Daimler factory. Airplanes. How romantic flying seems. Fokker's new airfoil must be a design breakthrough. Herr Jelinek? Oh ho! Who have we here? I'm Mata Hari. Really? I've heard of you. The scandalous dancer. Louis Renault encouraged me to meet you. He sends his regards. Does he, the bastard? Um, yes. Well, 
Old disputes should be forgotten, don't you think? We'll see about that. Tell him, call my solicitor with an offer and we'll talk. Good day. Wait. I understand your daughter is a fan of mine. I'd like to meet her. Mercedes is easily carried away by all sorts of whims. Why don't you sign an autograph and I'll deliver it? Mein Herr, I'll bet I could teach her a thing or two about growing up that you would never dare to attempt. No doubt, but I'd like her to keep her innocence. Goodness, you talk like my grandmother. It's the 20th century. Women need to get out into the world. I'm sure your daughter has told you that. Perhaps you're right. I certainly have no influence. She's in Berlin, with her own telephone, would you believe? Call 24201 and say I sent you. I will. Tell me again about Jelinek and his daughter, and Airfoils and Fokker and Daimler. I'm confused. Mademoiselle Jelinek is in Berlin. What now? Go meet her. Tell her you're an automobile enthusiast. You'd like a tour of the factory. Train station, please. Let's go. Good afternoon. Hmm. Travel is so tiring. You look like you know your way around. Any advice? Possibly. It's no challenge for a seasoned operative, mind you, but for a quick trip to... Monaco, take the rapide. Enemy agents will just see a blur. Ah, uh, quick, easy, no test of skill. In my present mood, that suits me. Berlin, the rocket, please. Ring 24201, bitte. Hello, Mercedes Jelinek. This is Mata Hari. I just met your father in Monte Carlo. Charming man. He suggested I call you here in Berlin. Oh, good. Why don't you meet me here in my hotel? I'll wait for you. Hello, Frau Harry? Please, call me Mata. How nice to make your acquaintance. I saw your last show in Paris, even though Daddy doesn't approve. Why are you here? I am always interested in ambitious young women. That's how your father describes you. Together, we must change the lot of our sisters, no? I guess. I hadn't really thought about that. And I'm an auto enthusiast. I'd love to visit the Daimler factory. I don't know. That's hard. I'd have to arrange it. Ah, but I'd be willing if you teach me a dance move to show my friends. You know how you do it? That should be easy. Here. But not one of your old ones. A brand new one. I've seen all your old stuff. That might take some work. I'll have to find an inspiration. I'll come back. I'm really curious. Ugh. Children. Damnation. I'm not sure I'd trust this in Paris, but it's certainly good enough to impress a spoiled child. Forty-two oh one, bitte. Mercedes, it's Marta. I hope you haven't forgotten all about me. I have something to show you. Good. I'll be here.
Welcome back. Did you find inspiration for a new dance? Yes. Your challenge may be just what I needed. How about this? Oh, that's so beautiful! Wait till my friends see me! Would you like to visit Daddy's factory? It's all arranged. Oh, yes, please. There's no one working on Sunday, but I'm not really supposed to be here. It's not really Daddy's factory, you know, just his money. We're not going to build anything, just see what the 20th century looks like. What's this? A metal ornament with the name Mercedes. Mercedes, look. Your name is engraved on this emblem. What does it mean? Daddy requested that Daimler name a car after me. Not these ugly things you see here on the floor. A brand new model. It's going to be very popular. I know. Let's go see what it looks like. Help me find the plants. They're here somewhere. Of course, I almost forgot. This is all very secret. Stand back! Don't tell Herr Daimler. Goodness! Look at that! Herr Daimler certainly knows how to keep a secret. Let's see. All these stupid plans. Aeroplane parts. Who cares about them? Ah! Here it is. My car. The Mercedes sedan. Marta, I'm sorry. I should have known better. Daddy will throw a fit if I show you. Would you mind waiting for me downstairs while I find out if anything he's planning is actually new? Now's my chance to engineer a way into this place. I can't reach that. I should look for another window. Though it's not the master key, but maybe I can use it somewhere. This could be useful. Smells like the barrel is full of lube oil. I knew that this cup would be useful again. Here is a window at ground level where I could climb in easily, but... Ugh, the latch is rusted, I can't open it. Now I should be able to move that latch. Let 
let's try. Victory. Now the window will open and stay open. Later, when I need it. Mata, we should be going. Sorry I took so long. Isn't it dreamy? I'm going to have my own car with my own name on it. Now for a look at those plans. Well, look. Factory wiring. I could kill the lights and then move around unseen. Better be careful, though. I don't want to alarm that man in the hangar. Hmm. I have to find a way to switch off the light on the factory floor, but leave the light on in the hangar area. There. Darkness. A spy's best dress. What was that? You, Herat King! I order you to stop what you're doing and leave me alone! Take a vacation! I guess Mercedes locked up. Yeah. Hmm. A metal strip. Maybe a poor spy skeleton key. Aha! Now there's a dance move they don't teach in ballet class. This should help. It's a boring book. I'm sure this is how Mercedes opened the safe, but wait, something's missing. You know, maybe this book isn't so boring after all. Daimler. Of course, that's the combination. What have we got? 
Mercedes new car, no? Engine displacement figures, no? Fokker's new airfoil, yes. Oops, too many numbers to memorize, and I can't take the plans. A spy leaves no traces. The airfoil plans, I can't take them, but I need those numbers. There must be a way. The perfect use for invisible ink. I'll just jot all these wing numbers down here. Band our station, bitter. At your service, Fraulein. Paris, the express, please. Marta, bonjour. How very nice to see you. Captain Ladoux, how very inconvenient. I've left the business, you know. There is a piece of intelligence for you. Come, come, Mata. No one leaves the business, least of all you. No, no. Once again, I must rely on your womanly ways in a matter of great urgency for France. What now? The Germans have developed a new cipher machine. We have a unit, but we lack the latest code wheel. Your friendship with Major von Kala puts you in a perfect position to acquire one for us. Arnie's a dear, but I haven't talked to him for ages. He wasn't in Berlin. No, it seems he's disappeared. That's the spy game for you. Renew your friendship and, well, you know what to do. Oh yes, only too well. Meanwhile, what are you up to? I was careless before. I understand you made photographs. Show me what you've got. You're so suspicious. I don't have anything. How does a week in jail to think it over sound? Here, Fokker's new wing design. Excellent. But wait, the paper is blank. Don't be so slow, Captain. Remember Brunel? Invisible ink. <laughs> Ma, a good joke. Now, Von Kala, the code wheel. Au revoir. Hello there. Oscar, here in Paris. My God, you're taking an awful chance. I was concerned about you. Ledoux is dangerous. Oscar, I gave him Fokker's wing design. So you did. Well done. It would have ended up in the French hands anyway. They're paying for it. That's a relief. Tell me, did you see a new aeroplane engine in Dana's factory? Yes. Someone was working on it. Then your mission is not over. That wing is not enough to balance forces here. We need to sabotage that engine and cast doubt on German industrial prowess. I just escaped by the skin of my leotards. You want me to go back? Yes, on the next train. War is looming. We'll see. Maybe I'd rather find Arnie. Matter. Don't be impossible. Berlin. The rocket, please. at it. All right. How am I going to separate that man from that engine? A little pirouette and voila!
This looks tough enough to hold the strongest coffee. With a less cultured palate, I might eat this, if I were also less human. Surely the day will come when I need a screwdriver. Hey, I'm working here! That's it. I'm going home. Those damn rats are too bold. I'm curious about the life inside a car. Just the thing to tune up an engine. <sighs> A half diagram. Half of a diagram. Let's put these pieces together. Well now, can you imagine? Fokker thinks the French are planning to ferry airplanes into enemy territory by hooking them up to giant airships. Could it be? So this is the new airplane engine, seems very small, and part of the top, or whatever it is, hasn't been bolted down, I can see inside. Take your medicine, that's a good boy. With luck, the cure will be worse than the disease. Excellent work, madam. You've done it again. Your bank account will swell with pride. But we haven't stopped any war yet, have we? It's still coming. We've done some good. We can't give up. Now listen. Remember that fellow Zollinger? You mean that suave, charming, wealthy murderer? The man I once went to bed with? Yes. I'm worried about him. Always have been. He's up to no good. What a surprise. I have here a coded message from our friend to officers in the German army. It might be just what we need to understand his plans. I want you to decipher it. Although I have no idea how. You'll find a way. It's your new mission. My sabotage effort was a big success. Did that earn me a well-deserved vacation? It did not. Now Oscar insists that I help him decode a secret message from Zollinger. I'll need a code machine, and the only one available is controlled by that peasant Ladu. Well, I got myself into this mess, and somehow I must get myself out. What webs we weave. The Express, Paris, please. 
Hello there. Hello there. Gabriel, what about arranging a dance performance? Not unless you can do something new. Don't frown. You need inspiration, Mata. That's an intriguing little move. Excuse me. Mata, you look inspired. Mais oui. I have discovered another dance idea. Let me see. What do you think? Matahari remains the queen of dance. Then I can stage a performance? The show must go on. Tonight, you danced like an angel and made money like the devil. Thank you, Gabrielle. Hello, Mata. Arnie, is that you? How are you? Beautiful as always, inspired as always. If you only knew... Can't talk long, Mata. I can't be seen with you. Why on earth not? Security's tightening up. There's a war brewing. We're all watching and being watched. Then I'm very flattered. You're taking a chance. I suppose. It's just to say goodbye. They've got me on the move again. Where to this time? Madrid. We're setting up a listening post in neutral territory. The world is changing. Take good care of yourself, Mata. Madrid, please. Mata, be careful. There are more agents on the move now, and I have to pay attention not to walk into their trap. But then again, I am always up for a challenge. What a nice opportunity. Through the use of Samson A's spy network, I can sabotage the train network. Which station should I disable? to hinder the agents in their unjust hunt for an innocent lady like myself.
Hello there. Bitte? I'm here to see Major von Kallen. I'm sorry that's impossible. I'm afraid. The Major sees no one, especially not so-called friends. Can that be Arnie up there on the phone? Looks like him. I wonder if there's a way to eavesdrop on his conversation. Disgusting. Kitchen slops. Oh, a yummy German sausage. Come here, doggy. Got something for you. That should keep him quiet for a while. Well now, this looks like telephone wiring. With the right equipment, I could probably tap Arnie's phone. Berlin, the rocket please. Would you believe it? A telephone right here in the station. Yes, out in the breeze. I called my wife, my mistress, my bookie. What? Oh, don't worry, I'm on the 1700 Express to Stuttgart. You? Do you mind? Of course, there's no hope of privacy out here. Can't be too careful, you know. Well, we've only... Well, at the end of the day, of course. Of course, as I wonder, I won't... Hurry up, please. Others want their turn. He's ignoring me. Thirty minutes later... Pardon me. Yes? What can I do for you? Could you tell me what time it is? It's half past. No, wait. Goodness, my watch must be broken. The train... Excuse me. What? Verdammt, my train! Looks like the earpiece wires are held in place by these screws. Ah, my first phone. Madrid, please. Less haste, more speed. Some fellow conspirators have organized the option for a direct connection, just for me.
I have to find a way to reroute the telephone signal so I can use the earphone I have to listen in on their conversations. I already plugged the earphone in an empty maintenance connector, but now I have to patch this connector into the actual telephone line. Of course, the original connection between incoming line and outgoing line has to function too. This obsession with secrecy and security, it's ridiculous. We can't get our work done. You must tolerate. Spies are everywhere. And there's a new code every time I turn around. Well, look for me near the gallery. You remember my face, right? That is verboten. I must see a picture every time to deliver the code with you. What if you are ill or detained? Arrangements have been made. They cannot be changed. Good God, man. The Bureau has gone mad picture it is. The assassination will take place in Serbia. What a blow to the false hopes of Europe. No, we're not waiting. The time for action is now. Some anarchist nonsense. Or maybe not. Excuse me, sir. Yes, madame. And who are you? A dancer. Oh, really? Well, now, you're obviously in costume, but you're just standing in the wings. As a fellow performer, I can see what's wrong. Stage fright. Don't be so timid. I dare you to try your act in the main square. So, you don't think I have what it takes? I'll show you. Hmm. That picture looks a lot like Arne. That must be what they were talking about on the phone. That's what I need. A portrait of me. Monaco, please. Good face you've got going. Ah, a woman who knows her art. What's on your mind? I need a portrait. Can you do it? Sure. <laughs> what are you looking for? Just a charcoal sketch. Something small. Hmm. That's easy. Say, you're not a bad-looking woman. I can cover up the floors. No one will know. <laughs> Please do. I have so many. Sure. Just a moment. Hold that pose. <laughs> what do you think? Very flattering. The floors are gone. Madrid, please. Hmm. There. Say hello to your new secret contact. A lot prettier than Arnie, anyway, and twice as dangerous.
So you're the courier. Not what I expected. You seem familiar. Do I know you? I doubt it. Major Von Kala thought it wise to vary our routine, for security's sake. A wise precaution. The Home Office will approve. Here, take this. Our new code wheel. Its messages are unbreakable. What a relief. Perfect secrecy at last. Say no more. We never talked. You never saw me. Never. Nor you me. Paris. The Express, please. May I speak with you? Hmm? Gabriel, what about arranging a dance performance? Not unless you can do something new. Don't frown. You need inspiration, Mata. Sir? Mata, back again. What have you got for me? Here, the German code wheel. I hope this is what you want. There's only one way to find out. Place it in the cipher machine there, and let's see if we can decode the message that's got me stumped. By we, you mean me? Ah, I'm hopeless. Everyone knows women are better at this fussy sort of stuff. They do, do they? I must somehow decipher this message. Let's see. Okay, there are three code wheels. One for the vowels, one for the consonants, and one for the encryption alphabet to be used. Aha! And I can use the knobs to turn the code wheels either clockwise or counterclockwise. Hmm. And now, which one do I want to use first? Marta, you've done it. You know what this means. I need a drink? The Germans will be coming through Belgium, as we feared. It's momentous news. Your good health. I hope you mean that. Nadu is overjoyed. I managed to crack the German code. How can he be so happy? The message reveals that the Germans are planning a war. No doubt the French are too. I feel completely helpless. It seems that nothing can alter the course of fate. Captain, I have a message to decipher. I need to use your machine. Impossible. The machine is dedicated to French national security. After what I've done, don't you owe me a favor? Hmm... No. It is you who owe me. You're a spy and a danger to France. And yet, somehow, you slip through our nets. Now, maybe you can solve a small problem for me, then I might change my mind. I can't stop history. This problem is personal. I work for Colonel Victor Malbec, a useless moron who blames his incompetence on me. He wants my head. I think it would be much better if we could prove that he's a traitor. By having him consort with me? No, thank you. I'll look as guilty as he is. No, no, you'll be as virtuous as a priest. You're going to wiretap his telephone and hear his confession. Here's the address.
Look for his telephone switch box. I'll call with some hot secret and we'll catch him passing it to the other side. Malbec's house, please. Please, get in. Well, look at that. Found the cables, but where is the switch box? A manhole cover. Hmm. There is something written on it. Sewer entrance number 318. Oh ho! Ladu is right about Malbec. Someone has dropped a little note wondering if French Zeppelins can carry airplanes and how many, how far. What an idea! Would the French dare attack? A surprise would cost many lives. Police station, please. Here we go. Hello. Marta, back again. What have you got for me? I found some telephone cables, but the switch box is located under the street. In the sewers, I think. Hmm, I expected that. Cables of government and police are mostly placed underground. And now, do I have to find a shovel and start to dig? That would be one possibility. Forget it. Otherwise, you could enter the sewers through the door downstairs. Your personal secret sewer entrance. Yes. Here is the key. I hope you have a map or something. Time to stage a dance for some rats. Ugh! The stench, the filth! I'm not going in there in these clothes. This should be suitable enough. Now let's find entrance number 318. Well, the rooms aren't exactly alike after all. What now? Oh no, this room looks just like the last one. I'm lost already. Aha! Room 318, and this is Malbec's phone box. Speak to me, Colonel. This should be Malbec's telephone box. Airships, yes, with bombs. 
cities in flames. We'll win the war before the Germans can begin to march. Josh, I've heard nothing of this. Stupendous news. Operator, 7112 military priority. Chris Kringle? Arnold, the most electrifying news. I'm told we will soon have airships that can fly all the way from Leo and bombard Cologne. That's right. As I understand it, 300 kilograms. Devastating. I'll forward details by the usual drop. Time to get out of these. A moment, please. Well now, how did it go? It worked. Malbec got all excited and called his contact. Chris Kringle? I think that must be Major Von Kaller. And? What did he say? Good lord, woman. Malbec said he would deposit the details in the usual drop? Then we have him! My men are on his tail, and when he makes the drop, we'll have the evidence. Now, about your cipher machine. Oui, oui, go ahead. I'm off to arrest Malbec. Gas? What on earth? This is very interesting. The French police have been ordered to guard a secret airship hangar near Paris. What are they up to now? Berlin, please. What is this? Hmm, a message. It must be valuable. It's in code. I'll leave this here for Ladu. He'll know what to do. Monaco, please. Thanks for your help. Never mind. Changeable weather this year. Don't you feel it? Worse than you know, my dear. I hear talk of assassination weather. Something's up in the Balkans. Thunderclouds, lightning, torrents of discontent. I'll keep my umbrella handy. A moment, 
please. Any word on Zoinger? I've decoded Zollinger's message. It's short and to the point. Gas research goes well. Factory production next. Gas research, you say? And a factory in the office? My god, he's planning to turn poison gas into some kind of weapon. This is bad news, madam. But well done. Zollinger bears watching, and now we know what to look for. Deception. Intrigue. Betrayal. Are these the tools of high-minded idealists? When I thought Oscar and I could change the world, I didn't care. But now, I feel dirty. And Zollinger is still a free man, admired by one and all. Now we come to the war, a grim time. How did Marta react? She hoped to avert it. I suppose she might have known better, but she had a strong will. She was determined. I must say, Frau Schragmuller, you seem to know everything about her state of mind. How is it possible? What do you mean? We talked, shared our thoughts. She knew she was facing the biggest challenge of her life. Marta, you look well, I'm glad. So, am I being detained? Brought in for questioning. I did issue a polite invitation, which you ignored, of course. I've been out of town. So, what insane plot are you going to stir me into this time? How well do you know Rupert Zollinger? I spent a night with him once. Long ago, before I had any idea he might be a murderer. Aha! So you suspect? On what grounds? He was at Madame Curie's, the day Brunel died. Brunel was working with poisons, and I happen to know Zollinger is researching poison gas. You are a marvel, Mata. I hear the same things, and I draw the same conclusions. Now, either you are his accomplice, or you and I have a common purpose, to bring him to justice. Why not issue a warrant, and the same man who dragged me in here will drag him in too? That's tricky. He has influential friends and allies. One of them is a German chemist, Fritz Haber. And my modest role will be... Zollinger has vanished, but his friends will accept you. Meet Harbour, and help me find out where Zollinger is hiding. Green times. Threats and counter-threats. Absurd posturing. Men with machines acting like boys with toys. For two years we've searched for Zollinger, but the trail went cold. Now Fritz Haber could heat it up. I must meet him. Hello there. Hello there. Elspeth, Ladu has me in a tough spot, and I need help. You must talk to Oscar. He'll know what to do. He's in Monte Carlo, as usual. Do you know Fritz Haber? Or anything about him. Who? Oh? Sorry, Mata, I've never heard of the man. What about this man Zollinger? I thought he was just another rich industrialist, but now Ladoux is out to get him. Oh no. Oscar and Zollinger were once business partners. What? I can't believe it. It's true. But they fell out over Rupert's plan to manufacture explosives. And Oscar has been trying to ruin him ever since. It's convenient when idealism and revenge work together, don't you think? Oh, Elspeth. Ladu must think Oscar is in this with Zollinger. It does look that way. Monaco, please. How nice to see you, madam. How unexpected. You look troubled. What's wrong? 
What do you know about this man, Fritz Haber? Ladu thinks he's connected to Zollinger. He's a German chemist. Maybe he knows something about explosives or gas. Uh, ask Marie Curie about him. See what she has to say. Elspeth told me that you and Zollinger were once business partners. It's true, but Rupert wants to smash the world and I want to preserve it. He's trying to perfect a super weapon, poison gas. I'm guessing he wanted something from Brunel, some formula, and murdered him to get it. And now he'll try to murder me. He might, but with Ludu on the trail, we have a chance to stop him. We? Oh, sure. While you're sipping your espresso, I'll be in jail, or an unmarked grave. Marta, that hurts. Not enough, Oscar. Not enough. The Express. Paris, please. Marie Curie's lab, please. Please, get in. Bonjour. Mata, how nice. It's been too long. You look worried. Oui. War is in the air. That means trouble for us foreign-born women. Yet you? You look très jolie. What can I do for you? Sorry to dredge up memories, but you should know that the authorities now think your friend Brunel was murdered by Rupert Zollinger. God in heaven! Who is he? A Swiss industrialist. It appears he stole poison formulas from this very laboratory. The organophosphates. Nerve toxins. I warned Jacques not to work on those evil compounds. I'm sure your friend was murdered because he refused all requests. If I can help you find Zollinger, I will. I want to meet the German chemist, Fritz Haber, uh, to arrange something for a friend. Do you know the man? Why, yes. He's very good with industrial processes. Nitrogen fixation. He's going to win the Nobel Prize for that someday. He's involved with Zollinger somehow. He needs to be warned about that man. We must take action. Here, let me give you an introduction to Haber. That should convince him to help you. Merci beaucoup. Berlin, please. Taxi? Where to, Fräulein? Do you know where Fritz Haber lives? Of course. Herr Dr. Haber? Yes? Who are you? To whom do I owe the honor? I'm Mata Hari. Please excuse the impertinence of a professional dancer barging in like this. I'm here, uh, on behalf of a friend. What, if anything, can a poor chemistry professor hope to do for a dancer? As you can see, although I'm just a dancer, I have the confidence of Madame Curie. Yes, I'm very impressed. Don't be modest. I'm not. I appeal to you to sever your ties to the Swiss industrialist Rupert Zollinger and help us bring him to justice. Zollinger? Zollinger, yes, that's right. I have consulted with the man. Does he stand accused of a crime? He's very dangerous working on poison gas, using secrets he stole from Madame Curie's laboratory. Really? His formula is much worse than, I don't know, chlorine or whatever. Madame Curie thinks it will affect the nerves. We'll all just keel over. Hmm, the organophosphates. Very difficult, very tricky. So that's what Zollinger is up to. See? You must help us. 
No, I don't see. Not quite. This is so frightening, it might provide an edge for my country to stave off war. Zollinger is not only a threat to all of Europe. What if I tell you that he's a murderer? I can't imagine such brutality. The victim is a colleague of Marie Curie. I've been told to expect indictments. Oh dear, this gets worse and worse. I will have to think about this news. Doctor, not only is Herzolinger a murderer as we discussed, but he's busy turning poison gas into a horrible weapon. Germany must defend itself. Of course, but Zollinger has no scruples. He's going to sell his gas to both sides. It will mean needless slaughter and no one will win. All right, my former trust in Herr Zollinger now seems misplaced. Perhaps, perhaps we should do something about him. Oh, yes, please. But my hands are tied, you understand. I'm just a shy professor. Here's something. Now and then I've been asked to visit Zollinger's factory, and on each visit I must present a sealed pass. I still have one. Well, the seal's broken, of course. Would you like it? Would I? If somehow someone were to gain entrance to the factory, it would be quite possible to sabotage Zollinger's work. That sounds very difficult. I don't even know where it is. Nor do I. When I go, the blinds are drawn. I never see a thing. The managers understand secrets, but they're idiots, chemically speaking. Simply adjust the hydrogen valves up 2%, the ammonia down 3%, and the phosphates up 5%. Make them think you're improving their mixture. And then? Bang. Here is a photo of you, Doctor. I'm wondering, it's so good. You're so handsome. May I take it? Please, no. It was a gift. Monaco, please. Madame? Good afternoon. Elspeth? What are you doing here? Don't you know? Oscar heard that the French are cracking down on spies. He went to Paris to warn you, and got himself arrested. Oh my God. By your friend, Ladou. Ladou will hear about this. The Express, Paris, please. Well, Capitaine, I have succeeded with Haber. He's willing to cooperate, for the greater good. Well done, Marta. One small step. Any further news today? Well, here's a headline for you. Oscar Samsonet arrested on false charges. Yes, it's true, I have him. He languishes in my jail. Do you know, he and Zollinger were business partners. His unwise return to France was too good to ignore. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask. All right, you horrible little man. Let me talk to him. Right now, this minute. Of course, downstairs. Let's be civil, Mata. This is simply the business of espionage. And what a business it has turned out to be. Samsonet is my hostage. Nothing short of you delivering Zollinger will allow me to release him, understand? You worm. You slug. You... you insect. Oscar, my god. Elspeth said you wanted to warn me. And look at you. I'm out here. You're in there. A wiser man would have stayed in neutral territory, I guess, huh? You weren't careful. You broke your own rules. What a dunce. Listen, Mata. Jail makes you think. And I now see what a fantasy it is to dream of stopping war. 
and how impossible it is to stand in the way of history. Stop talking nonsense. And what a crime it was to rope you into my feeble schemes. I was willing. I needed money. Get out, Martha. Leave me here and go back to the Netherlands. Become ordinary. Do something honest. I have a better idea. What? What are you talking about? Harbour gave me his pass to visit Zollinger's factory. Only Harbour can use it, so... How about this? I'll become Harbour. I'll dress up and impersonate him. Have you gone crazy? Why not? I'm an actress. I've fooled plenty of people. And what will you do if you ever get inside? Harbour also showed me how to sabotage the factory. You know, it might work. It's our only chance, unless you want to rot here. But you can't just dress up. You've got to assume the role. You need to look like him. Sound like him. Arrive in a fancy motor car like him. Although yes, almost forgot. Find out where Zollinger's damn factory actually is. Whoa, better get to work. Talk to me when you've got everything lined up. Sir? Marta, nice to see you. Still the goddess, the queen, bright and beautiful. <laughs> Charming, Gabrielle. My glorious beauty is fading, I think. And, to tell you the truth, I wish it would fade even more. My god, are you mad? What's come over you? I'm in trouble. I need to impersonate a man, a well-known professor named Fritz Haber, a fussy, neat and natty little gnome. Hmm, some sort of artist's ball? This is deadly serious. Help me. I've got any costume you might ever want. Hmm, but to do this fellow justice, we'll need a photograph. You're right. We can't take any chances. Even if I look like Harbour, how will I ever sound like him? Hmm. Impossible. Hmm. Impossible. No, it's not. I want you to scream. Just yell anything that comes to mind. Harbour is a coward! Not bad. Labu is a toad! Oh, pretty good. Zollinger is a cad! Nice and loud. Oscar is a fool! Nice and loud. I am an idiot! That felt good. Gabriel, I can hardly talk. Exactly. Now you're her harbor with laryngitis. Berlin. The rocket, please. Do you know where Fritz Haber lives? Of course. You. Excuse me. I expected to find Herr Dr. Haber here. I'm sure you did. My husband is clever, but he doesn't fool me, you evil hussy. I beg your pardon? You think you can carry on behind my back? Well, you're wrong. You're mistaken, Frau Haber. I'm no fool. 
The police don't care about marriage. Cheating is not a crime. So I've decided to report you as a French spy. Caught in the act. I'm sure they'll pay attention to that. My God, she's locked me in. The Polizei will be coming. I've got to get out. Here's a photo of the good doctor. Just what I need for my disguise. Wonder what it does. Hmm, matches. I didn't realize Hyra smoked. What's this? A note Harbour was starting, dear Marta. Oops. Hmm, it's heavy and pretty useless. The Strength of Chemical Bonds Annotated 3rd Edition. I don't need that. A list of appointments. Dentist, optometrist, farben. Boring. But wait, look here. Limousine to Z Fabric. Call driver, Holtz. Holtz! It's Freddy from the club. He knows the address. Well, look, the door to a chimney ash pit. Some tinder, that's a start. This should fuel a pretty fire. Mary would be proud of me. rescue a damsel in distress from that. My books, my papers. Marta, what are you doing here? I'm sorry if I've caused your wife distress. She thinks the worst, I'm afraid. She locked me in. Clara, I'll talk to her. Guten Abend. Guten Abend, Madame. It's been some time. Invitation, bitte. Bitte. Colonel Holtz is waiting to see me. Ah, the Colonel. One moment, please. Freddy, how are you? Marta Hari, a sight to behold in these troubling times. To what do we owe the pleasure? Freddy, I'm hoping you can help me find Rupert Zollinger's secret factory. I'm told you've been there. <laughs> Whoa, young woman. I can't tell you that. It's sensitive information. What's your purpose?
You're an older man, a wiser man. I'm sure you understand matters of the heart from long experience. Rupert and I, well, he declared himself to me and I hesitated. Now he's disappeared. I'm sure your sympathetic nature will urge you to see us reconciled. How touching. But I've learned to think with my head matter, not my heart. I'm terribly unhappy, Freddy. You've heard my tale of woe. I trust you to decide what's best for me. I can see your anguish, Marta. Thinking it over, to stand in your way seems cold-hearted. What can I do? Tell me where to find that factory, please. I'll be awfully grateful. I wouldn't want to stand in the way of true love. The world is grim enough already. It's in Monaco, my dear. Neutral territory. That's where I've been driving that stiff-necked professor. What's his name? Harbour? Monaco. Up the hill from the casino. Thank you, Freddy. Now good evening, goodbye, wish me luck. Forget you ever met me. Monaco, please. Bonjour. Eh? Elspeth, I've done everything I can think of to prepare for this mission, but I'm worried. What's the problem? I need a costume to impersonate this man, Harbour. Any idea where I might find one? Sorry, Mata, you know a lot more about that sort of thing than I do. It sounds theatrical. All right. I need a motor car. Something big, imposing. A limousine. What about Herr Jelinek? He lives here. Doesn't he own a big share of Daimler? Of course. Take care, Elspeth. May I speak with you? Remember me? Matahare, I believe. Your daughter, Mercedes and I, we're friends. Yes, I know. How can I be of service? Well, I need the use of a big black limousine, and I thought you might have one available. Oh, you want a favor? Possible, possible. I have motor cars scattered all over Europe. But first, a favor from you. Yes? Your friend, Mercedes, my young daughter, has run off with her boyfriend, some blockhead named Ludi. I want her back here, in Monaco, with me. Persuade her, and my car is at your disposal. Goodness! How do you expect... No idea. It's all up to you. So you want me to drag your daughter back to Monaco? From where? Berlin, probably. But you never know. Berlin. The rocket, please. Berlin 24201, please. Come on, come on. What if she's already in Paris? Mercedes! Hello, you're in Berlin. It's Mata. Yes, I'm still dancing. A new performance very soon. <laughs> of course, as shocking as I can make it and stay out of jail. Bye. Come see me dance if you can. Paris, the Express, please. Gabriel, I need your help and advice. Two commodities I never run out of. Here's Harbour. Can we match this? Oh, I think so. Easily. Step around behind the screen and let's see.
Bravo, Martha. <laughs> I, I mean, Monsieur Dr. Harbour. Will this do? Sensational! Then I can stage a performance? That's amazing! I'll prepare the theatre for another triumph. No, Gabrielle. This one is destined for Berlin. What can I say? If you insist, I approve. That was exquisite! What a performance! Hello, Mercedes. Merci beaucoup. Ludi doesn't care for dancing, but wait till I tell him. Let's not tell him anything. Ludi may be a fine young man, but he may just be after your money, and you're so young. What? Your wise and loving father has asked me to bring you home. That stodgy old man? Never! Paris, the express, please. Captain, I'm here to ask you a favor. What's the matter? If you want Zollinger, you need to help me threaten someone. Marta, how vicious. She's just a runaway girl, and her father wants her back. I want you to write out an arrest warrant for her no-good boyfriend. On what grounds? Alienation of affection, transport across international borders, false imprisonment, I don't know. Eh bien, false imprisonment sounds serious. Name? Oh dear, I'm not sure. I need a name. Berlin, the rocket please. Berlin 24201, please. Hello, Mercedes. Matter again. Come to Paris and bring your friend. Oh, and by the way, what's his name? Right. Ludi. Ludwig Engelbright. I'm sure he's wonderful. See you soon. Paris, the express, please. Captain, I'm here to ask you a favor. What's the matter? His name is Ludwig Engelbright. All right, done. Here, it's not quite official, just in case, but it will scare an ordinary citizen. Merci. Hello, Mercedes. Marta, meet Ludi. Hello. What's your business here in Paris? A dance performance, maybe? Your father asked me to reason with you. He worries about you. Oh, he doesn't know the first thing. Stay at home, Mercedes. War is coming, blah, blah. 
I'm no longer Daddy's little girl. I'm grown up now. So there's no chance to convince you of returning to Monaco? Of course not. This is no joke, Mercedes. Capitaine Ladoux will arrest Ludi if you don't go home. He'll never see the light of day again. That's terrible! Isn't it? For Ludi's sake. All right. I'll go. Ludi will just have to follow me. Promise? Promise. Monaco, the Rapide, please. May I speak with you? Marta, good morning. Good news. I met Mercedes in Paris, and she agreed to come home. Yes, I know. She's already here. I don't know how you did it, but I'm eternally grateful. My limousine is at your command. Vielen Dank. The Express, Paris, please. Captain, I'm here to ask you a favor. What's the matter? I'd like to see Monsieur Samsonet, please. Go ahead. You know the way. Good afternoon. Mata, you look exhausted. Any progress? I think I have everything I need. Not quite. There's one last task. Go see Shradmila. She'll explain. Monaco, the Rapide, please. A moment, please. Hello there. Elspeth, I'm worried. What's the problem? Hello, madame. Now I'm Fritz Haber, famous chemist. <laughs> Mata, you've turned into a man. Think it'll work? Only if you dress for the part. I know where Zollinger's factory is. No. Where? Right here in Monaco, up the hill. Really? That I did not know. I doubt Oscar does either. I have got this costume, but... I wonder who I'll fool. Unless they see Haber regularly, I think everybody. Jelinek has promised me the use of a limousine whenever I want one, but I don't see any around. He keeps a whale-sized automobile right here in Monte Carlo. It comes and goes. Haber's pass isn't going to work. That's where you're wrong. Oscar cast a seal from that soap impression you stole. Your first mission, remember? Zollinger's sigil. How could I forget? I'll just warm it up and reseal your pass. There. You've got everything you need. Now, it's all up to you. Whoa. Stage fright. Break a leg. Well, now. Your pass looks valid. Signed, sealed, perfect. I love proper paperwork. Herr yeah, Dr. Harper, this is unexpected. What brings you here? I was reviewing my calculations and suddenly realized we've made a dangerous mistake. Mistake? I don't understand. And what's happened to your voice? Oh, terrible cold. I left my bed to warn you. What do you mean? I've made a mistake, Zollinger. My reagent proportions are all wrong. So far, we've avoided disaster, but our luck won't last. What do you mean? What disaster? We've never had the smallest leak. I mean an explosion. Kaboom, sir! Mon Dieu! 
You're sure about this? Fatally sure. Now show me the controls, stand aside and let me go to work. Please, be my guest. Over there. Change the combination again. All green now. I had no idea what this means, but it sounds important. I'll make a note of it in my diary. Displays and gauges. I can't do anything with it. Wait. There are instructions beneath the gauges. Setting up operation. One, switch on pump. Two, open pump valve. Three, adjust gas proportions. Four, launch process by activating mixer control. running. Now we have pressure. These must be the controls Harbour told me. Here goes. This is it. The master control panel for the manufacturing of poison gas. So, what do I have to do? I must activate the pumps for the three basic elements, connect them to the main boiler and last but not least, set the critical mixture ratio. And then, I should probably get into safety in a timely manner. What have you done? I don't know. I can't correct the formula. Can't correct it? What? Of course you can. You must. Wait. Wait. You are not Harbour? Who are you? Goodbye, Rupert. Matahari. I'll kill you for this. As you killed Brunel? You damned whore! No! No! Zollinger's ideas are too clever to disappear forever. Others will continue his quest for the perfect weapon. Meanwhile, we've stopped something terrible from becoming much worse. I call that a good dance. Well, Oscar. We didn't stop history, but we did improve it. 
All right, you, you're free to go. My advice is leave France. In a war, no one is safe. Not you, madame. You promised me Zollinger. Zollinger is dead. Oui, oui, c'est vrai. For that and for many other little courtesies, you have my gratitude. But I can't prosecute a dead man. So, eh bien, for you I have a gift. And what is that? You are under arrest. Blanks? Your squad fired blanks. The most I could do. Quite a handsome gift after all. Yes, now that you're dead, you're a free woman. Testing, testing, are we rolling? Okay. Now then, dear lady, since our last conversation, I've done some digging, and I unearthed a death certificate for one Elspeth Schragmuller, dated 1934. Oh, dear me. Care to explain? You're sure about this? There's no doubt. Poor Elspeth. Many think she was the real spy, the one who taught me my trade. That's right. As you have guessed, once upon a time, I was Mata Hari. I knew it. I wonder, who will publish a claim that I survived? When I look back, spying seems like another life. I was nervous at first, but I kept my wits, and during my missions, uncovered many other evil plots and schemes. Who knows? They may have been my most important exploits. Being a spy was hard work, all those tricks and pitfalls, but I did well enough to survive. You may think I did everything for money, although that's not really true. How I loved to dance! Perhaps I should have spent more time on stage. I'm sure I could have won a bigger audience with a little more exposure. After the war, I moved to Monte Carlo, where I learned to gamble with chips instead of lives. You might still see me, older but no wiser, out on the boulevard with a gentleman on my arm. I can't tell you his name, he's still wanted by the police. <laughs> 